Good morning. So glad you're here today at Old Bethel Baptist Church. There are plenty of seats to find, so take your time and find a good seat. And uh, we're going to continue with a time of worship and praise to the Lord this morning. We always say, this is the day the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Let's say it together in unison, please. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. We're glad to be in the house of the Lord today. We've come to worship Him, to praise Him, experience in Him, grow closer to Him, and see what He's going to do today. You never know what God's got in store. Let's stand together. One of these days, it's not going to be too much longer. We're going to fly away from here. We're going to be in glory. We're going to go all the way to glory and shout the holy name of Jesus for eternity and just sing His praises by this song that's I'll fly away. One day soon, I'll fly away, Matt.
of Jesus come. Let today be
we're so glad you're here. But I think some of our folks must have gone to the Masters. What do you think? We have so many. But I know you came to hear about the Master today, so we'll be right ahead. I'm so glad you're here. So good to see you, Tom. Good to see you, Jen. You're here. Welcome, always. So good to see you folks when you're with us. Hey, now listen. I got fussed at. I'm not going to be fussed at today. Two things you got to hear. Tuesday night, the 16th, fellowship room, 6 p.m., right, Mr. Everett? We've got a VBS meeting, and we need you. We need, VBS will be here before you know it. And the way we do VBS is Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It's a beautiful way of doing it, and you remember that when we do VBS on Sunday morning, things are a little different in worship, but that's okay. We are, we'll have a big time on that day. So remember that. We need that. And also, next Sunday, after the morning worship, now this, where in the world can you go to come hear fabulous music and then eat country-style steak? You just can't go anywhere except El Bethlehem. So we want you to be with us. That's a fundraiser for our mission trip, St. Kitts. So please tell Kathy I didn't forget it. Will you tell her I did not forget it this time? And uh, and so and the Sunday she and Butch aren't here, I remember. So uh, yeah, also, if you would like a name badge and uh, you would like for us to order them, uh, we will be doing that in the next couple of weeks. Maybe you've never had one. Maybe you've had several and you don't know where they are and you'd like to get some more. We just glad to get you anytime you need them. All right, we'll see Ruby, and uh, we'll we'll make sure. Other than that. You're praying for your pulpit team. You're praying every day for them. That's so very, very important. Also, uh, you're praying for the 12 that are going. Can you imagine? 12. 12 who are going to St. Kitts. Isn't that glorious? 12 people. And uh, many of you have said, hey, we're praying. We're going to help you on this trip. <clears throat> many others can do, uh, haven't done yet, but you need to. And we'll be looking for that. We'll be telling you more about that in the weeks to come. Beyond that, you see all the other announcements that are listed in the bulletin. We hope that you will be at your place of service. I've got to tell you this. I, I, people are always talking about what we're doing on our trip. Just a minute. I want to show you something. I want to call attention. Two things over here to your right and on that. This is our VBS display for... Uh, our VBS this year, Deborah's done a great job, and some of you need to be able to come over here and sign up and help us, all right? That we want you to do. Also, this is part of our, uh, part of the things that we're taking to uh, to St. Kitts. And I, I've just got to show you this. Uh, Joyce uh, has been, Joyce Allen, and uh, maybe some of the others have been making. Now, let me show you this. We think this is something very simple. Oh, no, it's not. This is a handmade dress for small children in St. Kitts. And what we do with this, we'll have about 50 or 60 of them that we'll give. And the pastor's wife gives them out. We, we don't do that selection. And she will give these to some children who have never had maybe a new dress. The only thing they've ever had is a hand-me-down. They've never had what they call a store-bought dress. <clears throat> but we make, and I think George is going to make, what, 50 of these? Is that right, George? <coughs> I, I think so. And uh, so I wanted you to see the many things that are going on and happening uh, as we prepare to go. Many of our folks who are going are in process of making things for us. You, you, just, you just can't believe. And I'm so, so grateful for so many who are making so many, many things. And uh, uh, that trip is July, uh, what is it, 11th, the 12th? Uh, tell me, I'm like this to plane, I don't know. But uh, uh, that's going to be a great time. I want you to see what is going on. I also, uh, Pat, uh, Pat Campbell, she's been making so many things for our workers and continues. I'll, I'll show you these things from time to time. I want you to see just exactly what we're doing. It takes so much to go down and, and, and take. Remember, we're going to feed these children Monday through Friday. All right? We're going to feed them every single day. And for some of them, not all of them, 
But for some of them, it can be the only really hot meal they get that day. So uh, you want to be praying for our folks as they get ready to go. God's been so good to us. Let's never forget that. Let's not forget the issues that are happening in the world today. Uh, Israel having been attacked last night. Um, and uh, again, um, everything seems to pull together. Uh, the message entitled this morning is the seven signs of Christ coming again. A little different approach. Okay? And so when we think about what's going on in the world, as uh, Emily was singing, it could come. Jesus come. It could be. It could be today. Boy, if that gets us out of this mess, we wouldn't have to listen to all these commercials on TV anymore. About I'll be a better president. I'll be a better president. She'll be a better person. Let's let's just thank the Lord that we know Him personally. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer right now, and as we do, let's be made mindful of just how good God is. I get it. I was glad when they said it to me. Let us go into the house of the Lord. So grateful that someone invited me and brought me. Lord Jesus, thank you for this church, for the church building, the church campus. We're grateful. We're grateful for the church. We've gathered together right now to worship. This is the church right here. And I pray that we'll never neglect our assembling together and our love and sharing that love of Christ with one another. Lord, our concerns are heavy for the world. But then, when we read the book, you told us all of this would come to pass one day. So Lord, help us as we pray for the world situation, as we pray for Israel, your anointed, your appointed children. May it always be said that we support, pray, and back the people of Israel. Lord, we're thankful that your hand of blessing continues to rest upon this church. There's nothing we're doing, but it is everything you are doing. We're just wanting to follow your leadership. Maybe we be found faithful. Just faithful. Maybe we maybe be a beat. Oh, yes, you're sinners. All of us. All of us, Lord, that you continue to grant us your forgiveness, your mercy, and your grace. What we Without your grace, I know not. Thank you. For everyone that is here, bless them. For those who are not here, bless them. Bless our pulpit team as they continue searching for your man for this church. Bless these 12 who are going yonder ways to the island of St. Kitts in July. Bless them as they go. Thank you for a church that believes in missions, that does so much for the call of Christ, locally and globally, on the field of mission. We give you thanks. And now, Lord, in just a moment, we're going to come and bring our offering to you. It's our love gift, it's a tithe, a sacrificial gift. Many have given online, many have given beforehand, but many have not. And so I pray that you're going to accept our love gift, and it is from our heart. Oh, my. Just to say once again, I'm in love with you, Lord Jesus. But thank you for loving me. So right now, as we bring our prayer to a close, we give thanks with so many, many grateful hearts because of that. We can be grateful day in and day out. This is our prayer. We make it in Jesus' name. 
Amen. If you've not had the joy of giving your love gift, come on right now. And Jerry needs all of us as we sing, give thanks. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given.
in Greek. The coming of Jesus. And yet there are three words that are used in our scriptures we'll reference today. And there are three words that talk about the return of what we call the second return of the Lord Jesus. The first word is parousia, and we read about that, the appearing there, and if you will, the sign of your coming. The second word is parousa, which basically means, uh, if you will, the, the presence of Almighty God. The next is apocalypsu, or apocalypsis. That's the, the first word in the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 1. And then there is a fourth term that I guess we use loosely, Found over there in the book of Titus, it is the word epiphania in Greek. We know it to be epiphany. And that is said over there in Titus in uh, chapter 2, verse 13. Looking for the glorious epiphany, appearance of our great God and Lord and Savior. Now, Luke in chapter 21, verse 25, talks about the signs. It is plural the signs of your imminent return. Now, when we talk about that, it doesn't mean that if there's an earthquake here or a flood there, he's coming that afternoon. He could, but sometimes we want to read things into the Bible that may not be there. But it tells us that there are going to be signs. It's plural. There are going to be things. And God would say to us, He who has eyes to see, let him see. And he who has ears to hear, let him hear. When we talk about signs, just a couple of months ago, as the weather got a little warmer, and in the last four or five weeks, we began seeing the trees beginning to bud with leaves. Your grass that maybe was brown, if you have grass, uh, began turning a little green. And we knew when we saw the leaves coming on the tree, the flowers budding, the grass was starting to turn green. We knew then that spring was right around the corner. That was a sign. Those are signs for us, are they not, uh, when you see all of that happening? There are signs telling us that indeed spring is coming. The Bible says there are many, many signs that we need to think about. And what are those signs? We can go read and read. And we, we know uh, Second Timothy tells us in chapter 3 some of the signs to look for. But I want to do it in, in a broader way, very quickly this morning. I want to give you just something to think on. I want to give you some of the meat of the word this morning, all right? So here we go. What are seven signs? There are many, many more, of course. But I'm going to share with you what I've found in reading God's Word, seven signs. Number one, the presence of the Jew. The presence of the Jew. That is a sign of Christ's coming. And if you turn over there to Matthew chapter 24, the Lord says, Assuredly, the Greek says, Assuredly, I say to you, this generation, now look at that, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things come to pass. That's Matthew chapter 24, verse 34. Now let me show you something here. Why am I saying that the Jew will be a sign? Really? Now look at that in, in verse 34. Your Bible, King James and New King James, says generation. That word in Greek is genia. But it means more than what you see here as King James interpreted. The Greek tells you that genia refers to a race, a distinct race. It is talking about a distinct race of people. And he's talking about the Jew. All right? Have you ever seen an Ninevite? Have you ever seen a uh, Hivite? Have, have you ever seen a Canaanite? These are races of people. Have you ever seen one? Have you ever seen a Moabite? Have you ever seen an Assyrian? I didn't say Syrian, I said Assyrian. Have you ever seen a Babylonian? Of course you haven't. They were a race of people, but they got off. 
The only race of people living today are the Jews that we go all the way back some three, four thousand years. And that is what Matthew is saying here. Assuredly, I say to you, this race of people will by no means pass away till all these things take place. So the Jew is a sign of the coming of our Lord. Let me read it to you again. Turn over to Jeremiah chapter 31. Look at verses 34 through 37 in particular. Let me go back up there in verse 31. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Now come down here to verse 34. No more shall every man teach his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they all shall know me from the least of them to the greatest of them, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and their sin I will remember no more. Thus says the Lord, who gives the sun for a light by day, the ordinances of the moon and the stars for a light by night, who disturbs the sea and its waves roar, the Lord of hosts is his name. Now listen, folks. Here it is, right here when you begin. It doesn't matter what you've done. Even the Jews' infidelity, even the Jewish people's infidelity, they will be given a second chance. The Bible tells us all Israel, all Jews will be saved. I'll show that to you in just a moment. That is a sign, a sign of the coming of what we call the second coming of Jesus. That is the Jew. All right, here's the second sign. Number two, it is when the Jews return to their home. Now listen to this. God's book says, listen carefully, Palestine belongs to him forever. I said it last week. I'll say it again. There is nothing in the Bible about a two-state solution. Okay? Not in Israel, not in Palestine, but all of Palestine or all of Israel. Turn with me to the book of Psalms. Psalm 105. Look at verses. Pick up verse, at, at verse 8. He remembers his covenant forever. The word which he commanded for a thousand generations, the covenant which he made with Abraham and his oath to Isaac and confirmed it to Jacob for a statute, to Israel as an everlasting covenant, saying to you, listen, I will give you the land of Canaan as the allotment of your inheritance when they were few in number, indeed very few, and strangers in it. We're not talking about two-state solution there. I don't care what the UN says. I don't care what the president says. God's word says there will be a returning of Israel in Palestine. It'll be one nation. One nation. And you can't help but wonder with what's going on now with Gaza and all of that. Are we starting to see this sign coming into fruition. Ezekiel 36 says it this way, I will take you from among the nations, gather you out of all countries, and bring you into your own land. Remember, there was a word that I taught you a couple of years ago, diaspora, a diaspora. That is, that the Jews were spread. That means spread out all over the world. And now since 48, 1948, the establishment of Israel once again and the, and the Palestinian state, what is happening is that Jews are coming from all over the world back to Israel. And the Bible says that the Jews will return to their homeland. Listen to what Ezekiel says. I will put my spirit with him and cause him to walk in my ways. Then he shall dwell in the land that I gave to his fathers, and he will be my people, and I will be his God. Did you hear what he said? 
God says, he will be my people, and I will be his God. So read over there in the uh, New Testament, if you will. Let's go to Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11. Oh, it's great reading. And uh, as we jump around from uh, uh, book to book, I, I'm, I hope I'm not confusing you. But over here in Romans chapter 11, verses 25 and 26. For I do not desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mysterion in Greek. That word mysterion, we translate it mystery. Lest you should be wise in your own opinion that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the full fullness of the Gentiles has come in. Look at verse 26. And so all Israel will be saved. There it is. Read it. All of Israel will be saved. They will understand that Jesus is the Messiah. Oh, that's what the Bible says. Incredible. You see, this is what I see as a sign of his coming. If you go to the book of Zechariah, they're going to look on him whom they pierced, and they're going to weep there in Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10. But the Bible says that all of Israel will be saved. What am I saying? They're all coming back to their state. Mm -hmm. You see, the war that's going on hadn't caught the Lord by surprise. He knew. He sees it all. He knew. But what we're seeing is what the Bible tells us when he says that all of Israel will be saved, that he's coming back. He's coming back to their country, the land that God promised. Don't you remember in Abraham and Isaac? God promised them the Canaan. There it is. It's right there before us. All right, quickly, number three, the third sign. The third sign is a prophecy of them speaking their language again. That's the third sign of the coming of Christ. In chapter 31 of Jeremiah, listen to what it says. Verse 33. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, listen, they shall speak again this language in the land of Judah and in its cities when I bring back their captivity. All right. 568 B.C. The Babylonians, remember, captured the Israelites and took them back to Assyria. Remember that? All right. When that happened, it's right here in the Bible, when that happened, they were taught a new language. They were taught the language of Aramaic. All right? Aramaic. And they didn't speak Hebrew. They didn't speak the Hebrew language for 2,400 years. The Bible tells you that. Okay? And, <coughs> well, think of it this way. Jesus didn't come speaking Hebrew. Jesus spoke Aramaic. Because that's the language the people knew. They didn't know it. Jesus knew every language, of course. But he didn't speak. He spoke Aramaic. And then something happened in 1948. Some of you were born then. Some of you might even remember. Israel became a country once again in 1948. And the Bible says that when they returned to their land, they will begin to speak Hebrew again. And that is exactly what happened today. As you listen to the Israelis, many of them, yes, speak English, but they all speak Hebrew. And they're learning that. And ladies and gentlemen, I submit to you, that is a sign of the coming of our Lord. Okay, I know there are a lot of signs out there, the weather and all that, but I'm trying to get you to go a little bit deeper. Okay? I'm trying to get into the meat of the word. And so, you go over there to the book of Nehemiah, and you see that in chapter 8, uh, Ezra the scribe built him a pulpit of wood, and Nehemiah is teaching, 
he is teaching them in the Hebrew language, but it is having to be translated. You read this in Nehemiah chapter 8 and 9. It is having to be translated into Hebrew for the people who were Hebrews. Now think about that. And that is the way the world, and that part of the world went for some 2,300, 2,400 years. And then 1948, the state of Israel was reborn. And the language that they had lost today they have recovered. To me, I see that as an impending sign of the Lord's preparation to return. Number four, the Bible says over here in Matthew 24, it says in verse 14, go back and join me on that. I know we're going back and forth an awful lot, but I want you to see this. In Matthew chapter 24, Verse 14. This old Bible line is about to wear out. Do you know what? I, you have an old Bible line. I wouldn't give this thing up for love and money. I mean, I, it just, it's just, it's great. All right, over here, look, Matthew 24, 14. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached, listen, in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. How in this world is television and radio? There is your there is your sign. It is being preached all over the world. Years ago, for the International Mission Board, I was teaching a, a J term, a four week class in India, and I was in the Khand Hills, K H O N D, the Khand Hills, and I remember with one of our missionaries, Calvin Fox. He was with me there, and he said, you see these hills? This was back in the year 2000, 1999 or 2000. He said, you see all these hills? He said, I want you to know, in these hills, between four and five million people live who have never, never, even heard the name Jesus Christ. They've never even heard. And they're so hard to get to. Even that. Now, there have been some major inroads down into the Con Hills, but even without understanding, there's still, as I understand as of today, there's still over a million people in those hills. That's just in that one little tiny part of India who have listened to me, have never even heard the name of Jesus Christ. But the Bible says, and Jesus himself said, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached, look, in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. We still have it. You remember I told you not too long ago, 93% of the world has heard of Coca-Cola. And they've only been around 120 years. 93% of the world. And yet, the gospel's been around for 2,000 plus years. And what is it? 60-70% uh, of the world has heard of Jesus, but another 20 or 30% have never heard of Jesus. Never heard of it. The Bible says that indeed the world will be given that opportunity. Everyone will hear that Jesus Christ is Lord. And the Bible says that once, once that's happened, once that has happened, then you can believe the end is here. Very quickly, let me get through this quickly if I can. The book of Daniel talks about all this. There'll be a great increase in what we call technology. And, and you know it's here. It is here. And I'm not going to, we don't have time to go reading through that, but you can read Daniel chapters 11, 12, and 13. And you'll, you can see the inference that is there to the expansion of technology. Who, who would have thought that I could, that you could have a telephone and dial somebody in Russia and talk to them and look at them at the same time? It's called 
Facebook, no, FaceTime, that's that it. You call and you can look at them. Yes. I mean, I mean, that's incredible. I mean, think about that. The technological games that we have. And the Bible says this will be a sign of the Lord's coming again. Okay? There it is. It, it's in the Bible. Number six. I see when someone gives their heart to the Lord Jesus, I interpret that as a sign of his coming again. Because you see, someone has not only heard but received the gospel every time they walk down the aisle. Now that doesn't have to happen in every country, every church, I understand that. But I see that as a sign. And I see it over there in Romans chapter 11, once again, verses 25 and 26. I see that. Whenever someone is saved, I'm reminded, I'm reminded that the kingdom of God is closer. The seventh sign, very, I'll, I'll wrap it up with that. The seventh sign that I see is the apostasy of the Theodian church. All right, over there in the book of Revelation, chapters 1, 2, and 3, we talk about seven churches. We see the history of the churches. We begin there with the, uh, the church in Ephesus, and we go all the way to the end of the church of Laodicea. We see over there the church of Ephesus. They were leaving their first love. We see over there with, with the church of Smyrna uh, that we see many martyrs. We see in the church of Pergamos, we see a church that was being wed to the world. In church number four, the Thyterian church, we see a church that was rich, but in many ways idolatrous. We see the Sardinian church, the church of the Reformation. Number six, we see the church of Philadelphia, the open door church. But the last period of the church, the last church we see, is the Laodicean church. And that is the church where Jesus stands at the door and knocks, and he wants to get in. Yes, there are a lot of churches today who are assembled, and Jesus stands outside the door knocking because he wants to be invited in, because the gospel fails to be preached in these churches today. So, ladies and gentlemen, I submit to you, there are many other signs of the coming of the Lord. These are seven that I have picked. And if you watch the news, you'll begin to see, not, not only watching the news, but reading the book, you're going to see the fulfillment of Scripture right before your eyes. Now remember, <clears throat> when you come, when the church is raptured, remember, Jesus is not going to put his foot on, on the land. He will not touch the earth. He will come in the air, and the church will be raptured. All right? We'll join him. Then, after seven years of tribulation, the Lord Jesus will return again. But there will be that great battle of Armageddon. Jesus will come, and when he comes, then those lost who are dead, they will come and they'll face that great white judgment, great white throne judgment. And after that, they'll be cast into the lake of fire. They'll all be cast to hell. That's what the Bible says. It's all right here. All you need to do is to read it and reap. I promise you, ladies and gentlemen, Pastor Jerry said, it could even be today when he comes again. God help us to be ready. Bow your heads as we pray. Now, loving Father, we look around at the signs that we see. They're appearing everywhere. Everywhere. But we're not trying to read things into something that isn't there. We're trying to understand the things that are already there. Come, Lord Jesus, as Emily reminded us today, come, Lord Jesus, come. Oh, how we need you to deliver us from this mess that's making up this world today. Lord, 
as we talk very quickly about your coming today. If there's one person here today, this is your invitation. If there's one person here who's never said, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and save me, I want to be born again. You've never made a prayer like that. I'm going to ask you, God, you see, to come stand right here with me, right? This is my appeal to you. He loves you, sir. Take just a moment, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Take just a moment to pray for Israel. The Bible just said, you will know the time is near when Jerusalem is surrounded by armies. Get a map and look at what's happening. <coughs> look. Scripture. We pray for the people of Israel. We pray for the Jewish folks. Lord, we know the rest of the story. Hallelujah. What a Savior. Yes, sir. That's our prayer. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, listen, thank you for being here. Our trip to uh, St. Jesse had a brief meeting in the conference room, which is down that hallway, and I will see you there in just a moment. Go out and make it a great day. But pay attention, now more than ever before. Okay? I'm not trying to, I'm just trying to make you aware of everything you see. is in the Bible. Everything that's going on in Israel today, everything is in the Bible. Let's stand for our closing prayer, please. Yes, come, come up. Come up. Keep playing. Come up. Come again. Now listen. Don't you dare go anywhere because we got two people who are coming home. Amen. are so loved here. Both of you are. And, and, and when I, when people hear that y'all are coming, they get so excited. I sometimes feel like I just need to get out of the pulpit way you need to sit up there and sing it directly. I mean, we're so glad to have you. We're so glad to have you both of you. Welcome home. <laughs> come, I want you to come stand with me over here. Now listen, the choir's going to sing. And after they have sung, I want you to do me this favor. Tom and Ginger up here, come to my right, to your left, and tell them, welcome home. <laughs> it's been a long time. <laughs> tell them, welcome home. When you let, you'll come to your to my right, to your left, coming this way, and you'll welcome them home. Let's bow our heads, and the benediction simply is the blessing. Jerry, lead us in that, if you would, please. Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace.